The heart of the Real Next import is this mapping screen. The map is broken into sections to make it easier to find specific fields. The sections follow the tabs in the CRM. For example, when you look at a contact in the CRM, you'll see tabs such as Investor and Tenant. The fields in the Investor tab will be found in the Investor section of the map. To open a list, click the title. There are four columns for each field. The first column shows the field name you see in the CRM. You can use the scroll bar to move through the fields in a section. The second column is a drop-down that contains the names of the fields from your spreadsheet. The fields in the drop-down will be in the same order they are in your spreadsheet and will show the names you created in the first row of the spreadsheet. You can manually map each field by clicking the down arrow in a column and selecting the field from your spreadsheet that matches the field in the CRM. Here I'm mapping the last name field to the field in my spreadsheet that contains last name. There's a much easier way to map your fields using the Auto Map button. When you click the Auto Map button, the system searches your spreadsheet for columns that match a field name in your CRM. If we look at my spreadsheet, you'll see I named the columns to match the fields in the CRM. When I click the Auto Map button, Realnext automatically maps all my fields for me. There are two remaining columns. The first is for duplicate checking. When you do an import, it's possible that some of the records you're importing are already in your database. If you want, you can set key fields that act to find existing records so you don't get duplicate records. In this example, I've set four fields as keys. You can see the checks by name, company, address, and city. What that tells Realnext is before you add a record from the spreadsheet, check and see if there is a record already in the CRM with the exact same name, company, address, and city. If there is an exact match, you're telling the import it's a duplicate. In that case, the record will not be added to your CRM. This eliminates duplicates from getting into your database. Let me give you a word of caution. Use enough keys to make sure you really found a duplicate. For example, if you used first name as the only key, that wouldn't be unique. There are probably a lot of people in your database with the same first name. So using first name by itself as a key is not good enough. On the other hand, if your spreadsheet had email addresses and your CRM had email addresses, that would be a good field because no one can have the same email address. One other warning, if you use key fields that are blank, that also is not a good idea. For example, if you used email as the key, but 50 records in your spreadsheet did not have an email address, those 50 records would be considered duplicates because they all have a blank email address and blank matches blank. So in general, you want to use multiple fields for keys. The last column, Update Rule, is only used if you're checking for duplicate records. When a duplicate record is found, the CRM will use these rules to decide what it should update. In my example, I have four fields that are not keys. For salutation, I set the rule to when blank. If a duplicate record is found, the importer will check the salutation field in the CRM. If salutation has a value, it will not be updated. If salutation is blank, the importer will add the value from the spreadsheet. For the greeting field, I set the rule to always. If a duplicate record is found in the CRM, the importer will always update the greeting field with what is in the spreadsheet. For title, I set the rule to never. If a duplicate record is found in the CRM, the title field will never be updated. This concludes our help on the import mapping.